Adios Sivian, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, Phoebe Jessup sits down with Isaac Bain and Carolyn Jordan to discuss the theatrical release of The Tempest, Connor McClendon hops aboard with the NHS crew team, and The Transcript proudly highlights this silent film, Quite the Scandal, winner of the Williston Northampton Short Film Award. The Justice Department on Wednesday appointed a special prosecutor to oversee the ongoing investigation into the Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein said in a statement that Robert Mueller, who led the FBI for 12 years under the George W. Bush and Barack Obama administrations, will serve as special counsel. The Syrian government has denied allegations made by the United States that they are committing mass murders of political enemies in a secret prison outside of Damascus. The U.S. also alleges that the Syrians are burning bodies to cover up the mass killings. The controversial Turner's Falls High School mascot, the Indian, has returned by popular vote after being removed earlier this year. On Monday, citizens overwhelmingly signaled their desire to keep the Indian as the mascot. Hi, I'm Phoebe Jessup. This week, Northampton High School is presenting the last capstone show of the year, The Tempest, directed by Isaac Bain. Isaac has been involved in theater since his sophomore year, but this is his first time directing. Drawing from his experience on and off the stage, Isaac was ready to take on such a large leadership role. I'm able to understand everybody. Um, there's, uh, when my lighting designer comes to me with some problems, I get all of the lingo. If, if an actor comes along and says, well, I, I don't understand this blocking, or I need help with this line, um, I don't know what it means, all of that, I, I've totally been there, um, so I can help help out basically everybody. It has been nearly eight years since NHS performed a Shakespeare show, so Isaac took the opportunity to direct The Tempest, one of his all-time favorite shows. I saw it once at uh, Hartford Stage, and I fell in love with it. Um, everything about it was so amazing and magical. I left the show, and I had all of these ideas for how I would do it, and um, I've got the chance to do it. Carolyn Jordan has been part of three other NHS theater productions in the past, but with no previous experience with Shakespeare. She says that the most difficult part of the show is figuring out what the lines actually mean. I think the biggest challenge with coming with Shakespeare plays is knowing kind of what you're saying. You say these lines and you stop and you say, hey, what does this word mean? What did, what did I just say? According to Isaac, the two biggest challenges with directing a Shakespeare show are learning the older English and blocking the show to make sure it is visually appealing. It's a lot more complicated than uh, one might think in a lot of places. Um, so you always have to make sure that people understand what they're saying. A lot of the time your audience isn't going to get every word that can... I, I don't get every word that happens um, when I see a Shakespeare. So it's, it's important that um, no matter what your actors are saying, that people are interested visually in what's going on. This is the first capstone play this year to be performed in the auditorium. Isaac explained that since this is a larger production and clashed with other shows, he was allowed to use the larger space. Carolyn says that the larger stage provides a more intimate experience between the actors. In the auditorium, it kind of just feels like you and your stage partner is on stage. You can create a lot more visual intrigue um, with your set and uh, your actors in terms of where everybody is. The show's going great. Um, we hit a bit of a rocky patch in the middle. We kind of had some scheduling issues um, with other plays and productions going on. But uh, we've hit our groove, um, and the play is coming along really, really nicely. And I think it's going to turn out awesome by the end of this week. The Tempest is running tonight, May 19th, through Saturday, May 20th at 7 p.m., with a 2 p.m. matinee on Saturday. Tickets are $5 for students, staff, and seniors, and $8 for adults. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? This week, I talked to NHS seniors Chris West and Grace Schiaffo, who are both captains on the crew team. All right, so crew is a unique sport in that you get to do it in the fall and the spring. Uh, so do you feel that there are any advantages to doing it two seasons a year? Uh, I think there are a lot of advantages just in that we get to spend so much more time together. So we get to really strengthen the bonds between teammates. And then also you just get more time to practice the sport. And so there's a really nice progression from the fall to the spring season where the fall is um, a focus on technique and we have longer races. And then the spring is a focus on strength and power. So it looks like you guys were running some pretty intense drills during practice the other day. Uh, so what does a typical crew practice look like? Well, we get there about 
3.30, um, you bring oars down, you bring launch stuff down. Launch is basically the boat that your coach follows you in. And um, and then you bring the boat down. And then basically, I mean, each coach has different um, different practices. But you do some drills. You do, you know, you do a warm-up. And then you do usually do your race pieces. Sometimes they can be, you can do like two, three-minute pieces, or you do one ten-minute piece. Depending on the race that's coming up, we might work on race starts, which are these fast, um, like, ten strokes that we do at the beginning of a race to get you started, um, because you're starting from a standstill. Um, and then we'll work on some sprint pieces or, or something else, depending on the day. Uh, so how did you originally get into a crew? Um, I saw crew on the Olympics in 2012, and I was I just I turned on the TV and I saw the sport, and I was I just thought it looked so cool, um, so I tried it out that summer, and I fell in love with it. So I've been doing it uh, since then uh, for about five years now. Uh, and finally, this is your senior season, uh, so your last season here at the high school. What are you going to miss most about being a part of this program? I'll probably miss the people most of all. It's it's awesome because we're out. We're not just. In NHS, like we get to branch out, and we know other people from other schools. So I'm gonna miss the people mostly. Um, absolutely, just the the team and the team members. I'll really miss that. But then uh, there's just this wonderful sensation during the race. Um, I absolutely love spring races because. Um, Usually, you get to do a race start, which is what I was describing, and um, so you start from a standstill, and all these boats are lined up, and um, the announcer counts down, and it's like the anticipation is incredible, and then uh, everyone, just as a single boat, we take like 10 very rapid strokes, and there's so much adrenaline, and that's just so, so exciting. I think I'll just miss that feeling so much. All right, great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. Yeah, thank you very much. In other sports news, the baseball team had their most dominant win of the season on Wednesday as they crushed East Hampton 21 to nothing. The softball team is 14 and 3, and junior Anna Kerwood pitched a one-hitter in the team's 5 to nothing win over Chicopee this past Wednesday. The boys lacrosse team fell to second place in their league with a 13 to 10 loss against East Longmeadow on Wednesday. The girls lacrosse team is 11 and 4, and the team scored 20 goals in a win over South Hadley this past Friday. The boys track and field team finished the regular season at 5 and 1, and the girls team finished the regular season at 4 and 3. The boys tennis team defeated Amherst 4 to 1 on Tuesday, and the girls tennis team had their most dominant win of the season this past Friday with a 5 to nothing win over East Longmeadow. Finally, the girls ultimate frisbee team crushed PVPA 13 to 2 on senior night. Senior Julia Snodgrass led the team with 6 points. Next week is the last episode of the transcript for the year. Make sure to tune in next Friday morning on nhstechnology.org.